All right, it's caddy time. We're gonna get back on this Cadillac right now. I'm gonna go pick up the new frame for it. I say new frame, it's pretty old. <laughs> Christina, before she was dating me, one of her ex-boyfriends actually painted this frame. She did all the cleanup on it and they were kind of working on it together. This is a long, long time ago, like over, over a dozen years ago. Anyway, we're gonna go pick up a gold chassis for this car. She had a second chassis. It's uh, sitting at my parents' farm storage right now. So I was gonna go pick up Rick if he's around. If not, whatever, I'll do it. I just wanna see what's there. Like there's tons of parts in storage that I don't even really know. I know there's driveline stuff and, and other things that we're probably not using because I'm gonna go small block in this car. I do wanna get the other chassis here since it's already painted, it's already clean. We can basically pop the body off of this one, put it on the new chassis once the chassis is figured out. That's the other thing I wanna do is I want the chassis here. I'm just gonna park it underneath it or right beside it or whatever so that we can build the chassis with hydraulics in it and get everything set up correctly without the body in the way, right? With this chassis and body together, we'll be able to look and measure and, you know, figure out all those critical things that we have to do to the new chassis to make sure that it drops as far as it has to drop. This is not one of those cars where you know, you install air ride or hydraulics in it and it goes as low as it goes and that's as far as it goes. No, 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 no. This must absolutely touch the rocker to the ground. That is the whole point and that is non-negotiable. So as much cutting or as much modifying, hopefully not too much, but as much cutting or as, mod as much modifying as I need to do to make sure that rocker touches all the way to the ground, that's what's gonna happen 100% so I've already ordered some hydraulic cylinders and some cups and some springs a friend of mine has a uh, couple of pumps that he said that uh, would be perfect for this car he's been hoarding them holding on to them for a really long time anyway so Adam's gonna hook us up with those eventually we'll figure that out but main objective today go get the chassis see what we got get it here get it laid out and figure out how low we can make this thing and what we're gonna have to cut because there are gonna be some pretty heavy modifications. I can see things already that will not let it go all the way to the ground without cutting some suspension. So the back looks kind of okay. We're gonna get all into that. I'm not gonna get into it right now. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. Let's roll. Let's go get this chassis. There it is. Little birdies made a nest right in the headlight bucket. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Just rip this wall down and pick it with the bobcat and jam it on the trailer. We got the wall taken off the barn. This barn's coming down anyway at this end of it. Here's those gold metallic parts that are probably not so fresh <laughs> anymore. But 
definitely saved the chassis from further rust. Here's your bumpers. We're gonna get all this stuff out of here today. Have a look at what we got. Here's the fenders. It's the cutest little bird's nest in there. Here's your hood. All right, we got the chassis loaded. Got most of the uh, parts for the chassis in the back of the truck. Figure since I'm here, might as well give you guys a little tour of the family farm. Christine and I lived here for a little while beside the shop uh, in an RV. We have our mini bike races here. There's actually literally a mini bike track here that we built yearly races, been going for 13 years. If you don't know me, I love mini bikes and I love them more than hot rods. Like if I was stuck on a desert island and I could have a hot rod or a mini bike, no brainer. Anyway, let's uh, flip the camera and I'm gonna show you. There's a lot of cars here. My brother loves collecting cars. Okay, so we're gonna start to show you the property. Oh, that's where we came from. That's where the driveway is. That's my parents' house up there. These are all the trucks for my dad and brother's business, Wild West Gardens. This is the farm and it's three acres. There is plenty of vehicles here I'm not sure really what the deal is with this little Datsun it's a pretty wicked little car I think uh, a friend of ours gave it to my brother and my dad hoping that they would uh, they would do some work to it I mean it's on the back burner but it's here there is a parts car 59 Invicta I know some of you guys are drooling hard right now if you absolutely need something off this car hit me up I guess I'll uh, see if Benny can let something go. There is a 59 two-door wagon. Rare cars, right? Two-door wagon, two-door 59 Buick, super rare. There is a travel trailer that has seen way better days. Right here is the barn that we just pulled Christina's caddy parts out of. There's uh, a bunch of car parts, old childhood toys, probably a bunch of Legos and crap. It's all hanging out in there. This whole thing's coming down. It's like coming down on its own, so we gotta got to clear it out and really bring it down now back here I built this shop years ago my plan was to live upstairs and uh, that's a really long story I sold it to my brother it's now my brother's shop we lived beside it for a little while before we moved out to the new place but let's go have a look at uh, the field of ambition my brother calls it 40 years of ambition <laughs> so yeah, we go, we do some crabbing, a little, little boat right there. This is a sweet truck. 
This is one that doesn't really need any work. It's, uh, it's a turnkey, wicked, wicked little ramp truck. Pulled this off the island from a body shop. Works awesome. We just love that thing. Doesn't get used very much. This is my dad's square body. It's getting a LS swap by Blake Lyon, or Lyon's Autocraft. He's in uh, Port Kells. He's gonna do an LS swap for us on this one. Just a 4.8 liter with a 4L80. I think that's the plan. Uh, that's a rust-free truck, by the way. Doesn't really happen very often on a square body. This square body is one that my brother just picked up. It is a 6.2 liter diesel, one of the early diesels. It's like a V8. This one has a factory turbo kit, not a factory. I shouldn't say factory, why did I say that? It has a turbo on it that was installed back in the day because these things are super gutless. Ugh, get this thing, oh. Well, there's no motor in it anymore. I didn't realize that he pulled that. Eh, a little camping trailer junk. Here's a parts car for our buddy's Corvair. Our buddy Mark, pulling some parts off this thing. If you don't know, Corvairs are, they're GM, and uh, they're actually like, like the answer to the Volkswagen back in the day, or not really an answer, but a competitor. It is a rear engine, flat, six cylinder motor, where a Volkswagen is a opposing cylinder, uh, four cylinder motor, this is a six. So people put Corvair motors in Volkswagens because they're kind of set up that way. They got a transaxle. Uh, here's a little Buick. G body. Here is the, oh, okay, oh my goodness. Okay, sorry, that brown square body, that's the diesel. The one up there is a new one. I don't know anything about it. Here is a pretty cool Hudson. I know it looks uh, decrepit, but this is a special car. Uh, these are the cars that started NASCAR. Not particularly this four door or whatever, but this thing has the NASCAR motor in it. Twin carb, flat six, high performance. For 1950 or 52 or whatever this Hudson is, that's pretty crazy. I mean, it's a super heavy, ridiculous car, so they need some power. Here's a 59 Pontiac two-door. Hello, super cool car. I mean, what more do you want? Like 59's the year, right? Check this thing out. Double fins on the back. Can you imagine that thing just slammed? We picked that up from uh, our friend in Kamloops there. Just a sweet little car. It's supposed to run and everything, but uh, it definitely needs tons of work, obviously. It's got some rust issues. This right here is a, what is this, uh, 50, is it a 58? I don't know my Rambler wagons very much, but this is a damn near rust-free Rambler wagon. It does run and it does drive and uh, we did pick this up from the interior. My brother and his wife, my brother Ben and Christina, yeah, my brother's wife's named Christina too, I know it's weird. They love Disneyland, and this is one of the cars that they have in Disneyland. So that's why they bought it, they love it. Here is the diesel I was talking about. This is a 6.2 liter diesel that I think has the motor still in it. Let me see if we pop this thing. Ah, no, he's got it closed up, I won't pop it. Just picture it in your mind. Here we've got, what is this, a Packard? Is this a Packard? Yeah. Pretty clean car, straight eight car, two door as well. The parts car that we saw, that 59 Buick, this is the one that my brother really wants to keep. This is a 59 Buick. I believe they call it a 425 Electra. I've only seen four door Electras. But Electra's a package, and 425, I'm not sure what that means, but anyway, it's a special car, it's a special trim package, and it's more solid than the other one. He got the other one first and was gonna build it, but when this came up, this is the one, nailhead car. We got our friend's 52 Dodge over there. I'm not sure what year that is, 48 maybe. Here is another big body GM, 1960 Oldsmobile. Also a super tough car to find if you want one. Like, check this guy out. Here's another car. I think it's a, what is this thing? This is a Hudson, a 37 or 39. Is it a 39? I think this is a 39. Yep, 39. 39 Hudson, four door. My brother wants to do all kinds of crazy custom work to it. I'm not sure where he's gonna start. What's gonna be the first to go under the knife? 
My brother's got a couple of pretty cool running cars. They keep him busy when he wants to cruise, so maybe he doesn't have time to build all these. Well, this is where Christina and I used to call home. Got a hot tub underneath there. We built this little pallet rack thing. Some storage over there. This was uh, a wonderful cozy home for us for a few years while we were kind of figuring our shit out. But this is a wonderful place for the dogs to run. You can still see there. These are the dog lines right here. Running back and forth, barking at the neighbors. So I'm gonna show you the mini bike track. I know it doesn't look like much now. We got plans for this year. Oh, this thing's double locked. Yeah, there we go. So, here's a bit of a corner berm straight away that goes down. There's a berm all the way around the other side. Comes on the inside of this willow bush down here and then back in. We plan on doing two layers this year so that we can uh, pass people a little bit easier. You know, some people are going a little bit slow. This actually fills up the water every year, so this is all mucky. But anyway, that's that. It's actually really cool in the summertime because all these are all these are uh, like Saskatoon berry bushes. We've got uh, blackberries growing over there. These are these are called tay berries. They're like a hybrid of like a blackberry and a raspberry. What else they got growing here? There's a persimmon tree. Anyway, definitely had a few parties here. Here's my brother's Impala. This is the car I remember from high school. Ben bought this car. We used to cruise it everywhere. It was butternut yellow. Had uh, just a snotty 350 that he built for it. 400 and something horsepower. He was on wire wheels. He was known by the police for a little while. Made a lot of noise with that car. <laughs> Okay, inside the shop, oh, it's nice and toasty in here. They got the heat on. It's one of the Wild West trucks. This is my uncle's Corvette. We're supposed to do a bunch of work too. I think Benny's almost finished with it. And this here is my dad's 68 Firebird. We had the uh, pleasure of doing all the metal work on it, getting it to where it is now. I was just talking to him today. We got to figure out paint on here. Got to get that thing painted. Japan's Customs used to call home part of the shop as well. We rented half the shop off my brother after I sold it to him, and we did that for a bit. This is an old Cadillac that um, my brother got from his boss back in the day when he was working in high school part-time as a mechanic. And then my brother gave it to my grandpa. When my grandpa passed, obviously it went back to Benny. So 1980 Cadillac Coupe de Ville, very special car to him. My brother's crazy for wheels, hubcaps. Got them just stacked everywhere. My uncle's had this Corvette since he was in high school. It's a 62 Corvette Stingray ragtop. This is his dream car and he was able to get it when he was really young and he's held on to it this whole time. I remember going over to his house and uh, and sitting in it when I was in the garage and just looking at it and it was kind of like one of the first cars that I remember as uh, someone in the family being into classic cars. Just a beautiful original paint, just such an original car. All right, well, hopefully you guys enjoyed the tour a little bit. Thought it might be kind of neat just to show you guys around, have a look at all the junk. It's not really junk, we all know that, rusty gold right? But um, yeah, I think I'm going to go head up there. I think my dad's making a little bit of lunch, so I don't really get to have lunch with him that often. So it's time to go have some nice lunch with the family. And then we're going to head back home and see what we got, unload all this stuff. I think Rick's going to be there to, uh, to give us a hand. Maybe, maybe not. He got a little bit uh, cold feet, so to speak, with the, uh, the icy conditions this morning. No big deal. That's what we got bobcats for. Make sure that you don't break your back. All right, go have some lunch.
Well, I just ran back to the farm this morning, two hours round trip, because I forgot to bring the spindles home. These poor suckers were sandblasted and not painted, so they rusted pretty good. So I am just going to soak the crap out of them with this metal prep stuff, that uh, Pour 15 metal prep. If you saw the last video, you saw me use it. Where is it? This stuff right here gets rid of rust. And uh, it's not as toxic smelling anyway. I don't know really for sure, but it doesn't smell as toxic as the rust mort. Basically the whole trick is the rustier it is, the wetter you gotta keep it. So I'm just gonna keep these wet for the next hour or so. It's a shame because they've got brand new uh, wheel cylinders in them and uh, new brake hardware. They obviously have had the brakes completely gone through and done. That was previous to me, right? So the back brakes on the rear axle, they're also done. So it's got all brand new brakes, but it's just so rusty. So we'll get as much rust off as we can and uh, get this thing into a rolling chassis. Okay, we got the the whole frame on jack stands here. It looks pretty good. It survived pretty decent considering, you know, it was pretty neglected for a while, but uh, paint looks okay. There's a little bit of paint discoloration here and there. Um, eventually this is all gonna get repainted and uh, or powder coated, but for now we're just gonna assemble it and, uh, and continue with fabrication. What's next is just bolting on our A-arms and our wishbones, like, so there's the, these are the lower A-arms. We've got to put ball joints in those right now. These are the upper A-arms. They have new ball joints in them already. So we're gonna bolt those up. Most likely what we'll be doing to attach hydro hydraulics is uh, getting rid of this plate and uh, building our new strong plate with a, a recessed cup for the spring and maybe dropping that cup a little bit further than what's stamped in here so that we can have a little bit more coil spring because the hydraulics takes up a little bit of the room for a coil spring so you want to kind of give yourself as much coil as possible to ride nice i don't want to put tiny tiny coils in here the other thing that we're going to have to do is bring the hydraulic cylinder up through the top here so we might have to clearance a little bit here and move the cylinder forward of the center point that it used to have this is the center point for the shock that cylinder is going to, you know, if we were to drill it right on that point, this is the mount for the A-arm. So we have to actually be away from that a little bit. Anyway, I'm not gonna get too far into it because I'll, I'll, it'll be easier for me to show you once we get there. But next up is I'm going to install the rear end. I'm gonna cut this bump stop off because I know that can't be there and uh, it's easier to do it when there's nothing in the way. I'm gonna install the front suspension, the A-arms here. We're gonna do some measurements and see how low we can get it in the front. I know there's definitely gonna be some fabrication. I'll likely end up doing a lot of fabrication to the lower A-arms to drop the front further than it will if we just take the springs out of it. Anyway, there's gonna be lots of figuring to do. So I'm just gonna go ahead and assemble it.
Check her out. I'd say it's looking pretty good. This is a cool looking frame. I never really, haven't really spent a lot of time with an X frame, but this thing is freaking cool looking. Like just the shape of it, the way the suspension is so different, you know, like, I mean, obviously it's an X that's cool, but the way that like the back kicks up and, and comes down and the way it actually all fits together, like for clearances, you can tell that, the, you know, a lot of thought was put into that. It just looks cool, super flowy. Now the back, gets low enough. It's perfect. I think I showed you, I measured how much space there is from the rocker to there and how much space there was from the top of the axle to the bottom of the frame. And it was literally the same, you know, within an eighth of an inch. And so my thoughts were if I could get the suspension to collapse enough where it touches the frame and we're there, like that is sitting right on the frame. So the back pretty much needs almost nothing for fab. What we do need to do to fabricate on the back, I mean, I mean, it doesn't need anything for clearancing. What it does need is it's gonna need a cup to accept the spring here. Now when I'm doing hydraulics, the most important thing to me personally is that it rides decent. It's something that low riders get a bad rap for. Oh, they ride like skateboards. Well, yes, they do ride like skateboards if you are, playing with them. Like if you want to hop a car around that weighs a couple tons, you got to put big springs in it. So that's why. So if you put stock springs in or close to stock springs and shocks, it's going to ride awesome. Like it'll ride like a normal car. That's why I love hydraulics. That's why my hot rod rides amazing because it's on hydraulics here, but that's just a solid thing. Like when you lift it up, it's still solid there. So it's just adjusting the top of my coilover where it mounts. So if the mount is up here, the truck's low. If the mount's down there, the truck's high up. Doesn't matter, it's still riding on coilovers. It is the same principle for this. If I put nice shocks on it and stock springs, it'll ride like a Cadillac. That's just it, you know, myth busted. So the way we're gonna do that and have as much spring as possible, that's the other thing is, you know, the more spring you got height wise, um, the softer it is. Now that's something that I didn't grasp right away. If you cut a spring in half, um, it's actually a stiffer spring. And the reason being is that all 10 of these coils move a little bit or five of those coils have to move that far. So it does make it stiffer. So having a long stock spring or as long as you can have is gonna make it ride nice. So I'm gonna do a bit of a cup. So basically a piece of pipe in here that is, you know, a cup this way. So I'm gonna cut that out, put a cup in that way. That's gonna accept the spring. Then the hydraulic cylinder is gonna be, you know, I'll probably end up plating the top here and uh, having a hole big enough for the hydraulic cylinder. And that's basically all we have to do for the rear. So relatively easy. This drive shaft actually looks like it has enough. It, ha it, def it definitely has enough. It doesn't hit that. I don't know why the other one does. This one doesn't. So um, I don't know if this is different on the frame under the Cadillac or just when it collapsed, the angles changed and it dropped that pinion. That's probably actually what happened. It makes more sense. Drive shaft doesn't need modification other than whatever yoke goes into the tranny and the length might have to be adjusted there. What does need modification is this front end. The front end is not low enough. That is just the way it is. Man, that just looks cool. I don't know why I'm geeking out about that, but it just looks cool. I took the bump stops out, obviously, or I, I just didn't put them in because they're not on this one. And I've got the frame touching the lower A-arm right here. So there's this brace that strengthens up this po pocket, I guess, or I'm not even sure exactly what that does, but either way, I'm gonna replace it by plating the outside of this so that I can cut this away. Now, once I cut this away, I'm going to actually fabricate and reinforce this lower A-arm to just bring that lower ball joint up a little bit. I don't know that exact measurement yet. I will find that out, but that is how I'm gonna do it. My other options are thousands of dollars for very expensive drop spindles that converted to disc brakes. 
There's also a cheaper version, but it'll still be a couple grand to do the disc brake conversion with drop spindles, or I could spend, I think it's like six or seven grand. That's not gonna happen. I don't do stuff like that. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna fabricate my way out of this and uh, rather than do bolt-ons, because that's just what I like to do. So it will be no problem. I will be able to strengthen up this end of the A-arm. I will be able to step that up as much as, you know, a couple inches I would be okay with. I may or may not have to modify the upper A-arm to either have a little bit of an extension on it or, yeah, it might need a little bit and then maybe um, alter the ball joint angle, but I may or may not. It depends on how much I do have to take out of that. I'm gonna do those measurements, but I just wanted to kind of go over what has to happen there. And what, what that's gonna do is, like that is gonna lower it just by stepping this. Some guys step the top as well. That's why I was saying it might have to have a little bit of fabrication done. But just by stepping the bottom, it will lower it as much as you step it. So I think it's probably a, under two inches, like maybe an inch and a half or so, maybe an inch and a quarter. But other than that, I am so stoked that she's rolling. Like it's rolling. Look at that. It's rolling. The, uh, the brakes are all free. There is new brakes and everything. I know they are rusty, but I'll, I'll have to obviously check them all out. But at least we're rolling. The hydraulics are on their way. Um, the upper hydraulic, there's actually, a, um, you can see there's a bolt, a bolt, and another bolt under here, take my word for it. Those three bolts, they unbolt the upper spring cup. So we're gonna unbolt that, and we're gonna make a new piece that bolts in, probably just on the CNC, and, uh, and accepts the hydraulic cylinder. It's gonna move the hydraulic cylinder out a touch so that the diameter of that hydraulic cylinder can fit without interfering with the pivot of our A-arm, because that's important. This is, has to be strong. I might even replace this with just a piece of half inch plate so that we can trim this back a little bit so that our hydraulic cylinder is as close to the center of that as possible. And the lower A-arm itself, well, it's, it's down now, but picture the coil pocket. I think I started telling you guys about it, but there's three hot rivets on each side of this C-channel A-arm and so I'll drill those out, remove that coil pocket, and then build my own coil pocket that's probably a little bit stronger and accepts as much coil spring as possible because I want, like I said, to have as long of coil springs as possible, as close to stock uh, suspension as possible so that I can have it ride really, really nice. That's just, I don't know, that's just something I like to do. I mean, I just want it to ride nice. And the other thing is that obviously that was the shock before. So now we can't run a shock or a stock shock location. We'll have to do outboard shocks. So I'll have to reinforce a spot on the A-arm to the frame and make a shock uh, happen. It'll probably end up being on this side because I've got this little pocket of clearance. It'd be nice to, to put a stock shock in here. I mean, if I can fabricate it, to use stock shocks. I think that would be kind of neat too, so that when you do go to replace them, you can just order stock parts. That's another thing with, uh, with the drums and the brakes and all that kind of stuff. If we go to a you know multi-thousand dollar kit, then all of a sudden you just can't go to Lord Co or your local parts store to get brake pads and, and all that kind of stuff. You'll always be buying the super expensive stuff. So that's the way we're gonna tackle the front. Like I said, it's gotta get right down to the ground. Once that's figured out, we will swap the bodies on them and start fabricating the firewall and all that stuff. I mean, that's it for me for today, for now, on the caddy video. We did what we said we would do. Got the, got the chassis here, had a look, inventoried the parts. We kind of figured out where we're at, ordered some hydraulic cylinders, figured out what we're gonna do for suspension or at least the first draft of what we're gonna do for suspension, how we're gonna tackle it. Back seems relatively easy, front seems, eh, it's, it's all just fabrication. We'll just think our way through it, take it a step at a time, try and keep it simple. But that will be the next video on the Cadillac is uh, once I get the hydraulic suspension in, we'll start cranking on it and modify it so that we can swap the bodies. 
Thanks for watching Make It Custom, everybody. I'm Carl Fisher. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. Don't forget to check out some of the other great YouTube channels. There's a lot of great Canadian content. Like I say, there's a lot of guys out there that uh, maybe I haven't seen yet. I don't, I don't go searching. I, I kind of watch my main guys. So I'd like to give a quick shout out to Cold War Motors. Badass channel, guys. You do awesome stuff. So check out Cold War Motors. Check out Half Ass Customs, DD Speed Shop, Fitzy's Fabrications. Uh, Bad Chad, all those guys. Uh, Blondie Hacks, all Canadians. I mean, there's uh, Iron Horse Garage, I think they're American. Oh, Hardcore Fab. Those are all great channels that I enjoy as well. So thanks a lot for watching once again, and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace.